This Eliza tutorial series is kindly sponsored by CalBiotech. Please click the link below or in the video description to see what Eliza kits they have to offer. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare the Eliza plate for samples. In order to really understand what's going on here, here's a little schematic. Uh, you're going to start with an empty plate, which is special because it binds proteins with high affinity. And so the first thing you're going to do is add a solution of capture antibodies to the empty wells of a 96 volt plate. Over time, those antibodies are going to adhere to the surface of the plate, as shown here. After coating the ELISA plate with the capture antibodies, there's still going to be regions in the surface of the ELISA plate that can bind protein, basically the empty spaces between the capture antibodies. And so the next step is going to be blocking the plate, which essentially is trying to cover up any remaining available space between the capture antibody that's coated to the plate. So basically blocking reduces the background signal in your ELISA. So let's just jump right into it and discuss how we do this. The first thing you want to do is spray your surface with ethanol to wipe away any dust and just wipe it with a Kim wipe or a paper towel to make sure that you're working on a clean surface. And then after that, you're going to prepare all of your materials and reagents. So the materials that you're going to need include your pipette tips, an empty reservoir, the 96 well ELISA plate, some DPBS or PBS will work, and you're going to need a vial containing an aliquot of capture antibody. And so what you're going to do first is, using your pipetter, uh, mix a few times the capture antibody aliquot to make sure that the antibody is distributed, and then place the droplet onto the empty reservoir. So for the next step, you're going to add 10 milliliters of DPPS to the reagent reservoir and it's important to note that you dilute capture antibody in DPPS because you're trying to maximize binding to the ELISA plate. Now after you've diluted the uh, capture antibody in PBS what you're going to do is set your micropipetter to 100 microliters and pipette back and forth to mix the capture antibody thoroughly. And once you feel that it's well mixed, carefully take 100 microliters without getting any bubbles and start pipetting it into each well of the 96 well plate. Now you're just going to have to keep going back and forth until you finish all the wells of the plate. And so jumping right ahead to the last one, um, this is usually the trickiest one because you're almost out of reagents, so you have to be careful not to get any bubbles. But once you feel satisfied that you don't have any bubbles, just add it. So after that, just give the plate a gentle tap to remove any air pockets. After that, wrap the plate in some plastic wrap in order to prevent any reagents from evaporating overnight when you leave the plate in the refrigerator. And after it's been wrapped thoroughly, just grab a post-it note or a piece of tape so that you can label the plate in order to prevent um, yourself from forgetting what step you're on or to prevent other people from picking up your plate and using it for something else. So again, you're going to leave your plate now overnight in the refrigerator at 4 degrees Celsius. And what will happen is the capture antibodies will adhere to the plate and some will remain in the solution. The next day, we're going to wash our plate three times with PBS in order to remove any unbound capture antibody from the wells of the ELISA plate. So in order to do this, you're gonna need some wash buffer, which is just PBS with a little bit of detergent um, called Tween 20. Fill up your reservoir, and then take your 96 volt plate and with a kind of a forceful thrust, just empty out the contents into the sink and blot it against a paper towel. I like to wipe away any residual drops with a Kim wipe so that I don't get my gloves wet. And then 
take your micro pipetter, your multi channel micro pipetter, set it to 200 microliters, and just start pipetting the wash buffer into each well of the ELISA plate. So 200 microliters should be more than sufficient to fill up the plate. Then once you're done pipetting, uh, I like to just give the plate sort of a gentle tap to make sure everything's mixed. And then repeat the emptying step and repeat filling the plate and empty and fill and empty. You're going to do, do this a total of three times in order to make sure that you've removed any residual capture antibody from the well. And this process of washing and emptying um, is going to be repeated throughout the process of ELISA. Um, so from now on, we're not going to be showing you. We're just going to be telling you that uh, you have to wash after this. So after having washed away all of the residual capture antibody from the ELISA plate, the final step is to add the blocking buffer. And so the nice thing about ELISA is all of these steps are a little bit repetitive. Um, so just like we put 10 milliliters of PBS into the reservoir when we made the capture antibody, you're just going to take blocking buffer, put it in the reservoir, and pipe it into each well. And then you're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and you can put it in the refrigerator overnight or you have the option of leaving it at room temperature for two hours and this is sufficient to allow the blocking buffer to fill up any remaining space between the capture antibody. After the two hours or overnight incubation you are going to simply wash out the blocking buffer once you've washed away all of the blocking buffer with the washing buffer three times as we showed previously, you are all set and ready to add your samples and proceed with the ELISA. Thanks for watching.